Good morning and welcome to our seed of encouragement. I got a word and that was the empty out. I want us to go to a story in Luke 7, 36 to 50. It's about a story where Jesus has received an, an ivy to come for a dinner in a, a Pharisee's house. And Jesus agreed and went to that dinner. Everybody was at the table and we know we are in the season of Thanksgiving, right? It's going to be Thanksgiving soon and it's going to be time for family reunion. Everybody gathers and come together. Most times those family reunion bring out the old things that have been forgiven, left alone. It's been brought on the table and there's going to be family shuttles, fight. There's going to be disagreement, agreements. There will be all sorts of things are being poured out when we are gathering in such occasions. Some people don't even like to go for family reunion or family gathering because, you know, they're going to be said, the things are going to be said to them that they probably won't like. But I want us to look at how Jesus handled this one. So they, a, woman, a woman that wasn't invited came to the table. So when she came to the feast, she came with a gift. She, did, she didn't even come empty-handed. She went prepared. She had a gift. She carried that gift to her to this feast. And when she gets to the feast, because she was determined, uh, from when you read it, the story, you see that she was determined to go meet Jesus. She already know that Jesus was going to be feasting in that, in that house. And so she, she planned ahead, oh, I'm going to go there so I can meet up with him. And so she had the gift she wanted to give to Jesus, so she took it with her. And so when she got there, she went straight and stood at the feet of Jesus. She said she stand there. She stand there. She went to the feet, the least place at the body of Jesus where she can touch. It. And Luke introduced it by saying, a sinner, a sinner, a sinner, that was a sinner, that was a sinner. You see the label that he has on it, that was a, a sinner. That's how they introduced this woman. They didn't even tell us her name. They say a woman that was a sinner came to the feet, came to the feast and came to the feet of Jesus. And then she stood at the feet of Jesus. She, she went to the least place where she can held on to her savior. Just like the woman with the issue of blood, blood she went to the, to the hem of the garment, the least place where you can held for feet. But she went there and she bent down. She knelt down. She began to anoint his feet. That's when they know that what she had was an alabasca oil. We know our alabasca oil was expensive according to their, their, their laws. And at that time, it was an expensive ornament and, you know, as very good perfume, aroma. So she anointed him. And why, whereas she was doing that, she's weeping, she's crying profusely because they say her tears. Her tears poured. What was she pouring down? She was emptying out herself. She was emptying at every burden she has. She was emptying at every label that they have labeled as stick on her. They have called her everything. Prostitute, divorcee, never keep a marriage, um, always not fix, completing a project, doesn't have a child, barren, um, all these terrible names these capable names that you can think about, has been called a label on her. But she went, anyways, to the one that called her different. The one that called her my daughter. The one that called her your sin are forgiven. The one that called her and tell her who she is. The one that was so merciful to her. The one that didn't look at all that was stick on her. All the levels and all the name calling that gave her salvation she went to honor that one she went in all her humility she went with all her strength she pushed forward she pushed past what people have labeled her what are people calling you what is the name that people have called you and you have allowed, allowed those names stick on you and you are living on resentment god has forgiven so much from you but you will still hiding the, the word of god said that those that are in Christ are not new creatures. The old things are passed away. They know you are still living in that self-condemnation. You are still living in all they have called you. God has, he says, look again. You know, the prophet asked him to go and look. He went and looked and said, I only see a little bit of shadow. He said, go and look again. 
I want you to know that the only thing that is constant in life is change. This woman has been changed. God has renewed her. God has changed her. She, she, that's when she has found the courage to go even in such a gathering. Naturally, she wouldn't have walked into that gathering. But after she has had the encounter with the Savior of the world, after she has had the encounter with the one that brought good news to her, she is able to break protocols. I don't know why you are still sitting back. Jesus has anointed you. Jesus has called you. Jesus has cleansed you. Jesus has called you the chosen one, the chosen generation, the peculiar person. He said, I'm going to change your name. Your name is going to be Hezbollah. Your name is not going to be termed forsaken. Now you'll be a land sorted out. That's what he says in Isaiah. But no, you're still hiding. But she walked right in, breaking every protocol of the law of that land at that time. She wasn't even meant to touch the Savior as she, they call her dad, a sinner, right? But she touched him. She worshipped him. She wept. She wasn't just weeping. She was praising him. She was anointing him. She was telling him, thank you, master. She was telling you, thank you for telling me who I am. Thank you for calling me your child. Thank you for telling me that the apple of the eyes. Thank you for telling me I'm wonderful and fearfully made. Thank you for this reformation. And she worshipped. And you know, and then she used her hair. She wasn't supposed to let her hair out because it's an abomination, right? But she let her hair out. She uses her hair to wipe her feet. And then she kissed her feet. She keep on kissing her feet. She keep on kissing her feet. What love is this? Jesus is all love. You cannot compare any beauty to that of Jesus. When you have an encounter with Jesus, your life change. Your life change when you have a reintimate encounter with the Savior of the world, the one that called you, the one that chose you, the one that called you, you are mine, the one that said you are my bride. Your life change. And then she washed it. And the people started murmuring. Some say, oh, why did she waste this expensive? Would have used it to feed the poor. The, 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 own, the, the one I invited just said, Master, why are you doing this? And Jesus said, look, Jesus called him and said, there's something I want to say. Jesus made a parable and said, after the, 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 the take a prayer, said, see, see, just showing how much she appreciate what has been taken away from her. But that you, that little bit forgiving, you sit here. And all you see is her past. You sit here. All you judge is her past. I want you to take a look at her again. Just say, look at her again. Look at her again. Look at her. So I want to tell you, I don't know the names and the labels that people have sticking on you and you are going around carrying them. I want you to drop it at the feet of Jesus. Whip it out at the feet of Jesus. Leave it at that cross. Leave it at the feet of Jesus. He is the feet of the, the good news that came to you and set you free from darkness. I set you free from condemnation. I set you free from judgment and give you eternal life. I gave you grace. Drop it. Drop it. Don't care what people say or what people called you. It's what God says concerning you, what God has called you to do. It's what that matters. I want you to bring yourself out from there. Push yourself like the woman of issue of blood. She brought herself out from 12 years of hiding and touched the Touch the hand of the Savior. This woman carried her gift, all the gifts she had, and carried it to the feet of the Savior and drop it there. She dropping her shame. She dropping her condemnation. She dropping her sickness. She's dropping her diseases. She's dropping everything that has been a way, a burden on her. She dropped it at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus said to her daughter, your sin is forgiven. Go in peace. I want to tell you, I do not know that which you call yourself. But God said to tell you that you are a choosing generation. You are a peculiar people. You are the people I have chosen. You are the people, you are the one I'm going to build my kingdom in. And I want you to walk like it. Walk like the daughter of a king. Carry a crown on your head and hold your head high up so your crown doesn't fall. Walk like it. You are supposed to walk into an occasion and they will know you walk into. 
Your presence is supposed to be filled. You're supposed to walk into a room and the aroma of the grace of God in your life will literally anoint people that are around there. And people will say, yes, something changed in her. And they will change because that's who called have called you. You are a force. You are a chain breaker. You are a rule breaker. You God has put you on the mountain top and you're supposed to walk like an eagle. Stop. Stop. No more. Don't live in self-contamination. Don't live in self-doubt of yourself. Do not live with what people have said you are. Be who God say you are. And what do you say you are to yourself is the other thing. You have to renew your mind. Constantly renew your mind. And know that a lot has been forgiven. That people have to look again to see. If they are not seeing this food and the seed of the goodness of God in life, that is on them, not on you. Jesus said the first will be the last. Yes. Jesus said the first will be the last. Forget about your haters. Forget about all the things that didn't happen or happen or all opportunities you lost. I want you to bring yourself out. This woman brought herself out. Break every rules and break every protocol. And she know where she's going. She know there is a one that called me. There is a one that shined the light before me. And I'm going to walk on that path. There is going to be darkness. There's going to be shadows. There's going to be diff there's going to be a force. There's going to be a force that is trying to tell you to sit back, keep quiet. Who do you think you are? But I want to tell you to raise your head up and tell them I am the child of God. I'm the one that God has forgiven so much. I'm the one that He shows His love for. I'm the one he died for. I'm the one he sacrificed himself for me. He went to the cross for me. He called me choosing. He called me peculiar. He called me a rare dancer in his hand. He said, my name is changed. He said, I'll be a city sorted out for. No more will you be tempted forsaken. He said, you will be married. Your children will be married. He said, you will be established. You will be the head and not the third. You will be the giver and not the borrower. You are the apple of his eye. You are light, shine like it, and act like it. Enough damning yourself, enough cutting off your life because of what people will say, enough hiding. Walk into that room and own that room. Walk into that room, walk into that place and own that. Walk into that company and, and own it. Walk into that job place and own it. Walk into that interview and steal the show. Because the grace of God goes with you. The Israelites said they are not going to go except the grace of God, except the glory of God go for them. And they say when the glory lifts and moves, they move. And when the glory stops, they stop. Why? Because they know that is who you are. When you walk into place, naturally the grace of God in you is supposed to irritate the demons around. So don't, don't, don't take it personal when you go anywhere and then you start a revolution. No, you are a force. And people have to, you, you are a shift. This is a pendant shift that you are at this time. So don't, don't, don't worry that when you move, you have a force and things begin to change for good. That is who God called you for. And that's who you are. Walk like it, act like it. See, she went, she wasn't even, she wasn't timid no more. Because they say perfect love, love casted her off here. When she encountered Jesus, the fear left her. Now she walks into rooms. She wasn't supposed to naturally, but she walked into there because she had this confidence that he that called her had predestined her and he, he predestined her, he glorified her, he chose her, he anointed, he called you for greater things and greater things is what you're going to do. So I want to tell you to empty it out, empty out, empty all that God has called you to be out, pour it all out, whatever that is holding you back, pour it at his feet. Whatever is keeping you in, st in stagnation, pour it at his feet. Whatever is telling you you are not good enough, pour it at his feet and walk, get up. Clean yourself up and walk right into your destiny and walk into your position because God has set it for you. He said he's leaving a handful of purpose for you. God is dropping a handful of opportunities, aligning people, precept by precept, step by step for you and you are there. Open that door and walk right in. That's what I called you to do today. 
open that door and walk right in. Go to that Thanksgiving. Go to that family reunion and tell them who you are. Introduce yourself. At this stage of your life, you have to begin to introduce yourself afresh. Tell them who God is in your life. I love you. Have a wonderful day.